to Victory of the Cross Ministries. I am Pastor Gerald, and this is my wife, Angela. We'd like to welcome you to our service, and we will hope you will just sit back and enjoy the worship service, the wonderful preaching of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We are a Pentecostal church, hand clapping, foot stopping, tongue talking church of the living God. So sit back and rejoice with us as we worship the Lord and in spirit and in truth. I'm not going to hold you much longer tonight. But the Lord may hold you. Amen. So everybody grab a Bible. Turn with me if you would into the book of Luke chapter 22. And I want to read about four verses. Starting with the 31st verse. Luke uh, chapter uh, Luke chapter 22. And let's start with the 31st verse. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as we. But I have prayed for thee, Amen. that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day. Before thou hast a shout, thrice deny that thou knowest me. Satan wanted to crush Peter like a grain of wheat. He hoped to find only shaft. And he hoped to blow it away. But Jesus, thank God for Jesus. Amen. Jesus assured Peter that his faith, although it would falter, your and my faith will falter, but it would not be destroyed. Amen. Come on. Amen. It would be renewed and he would become a powerful leader. Satan attempts to destroy God's people are just as they were in the days when Peter was being sifted. But Jesus, thank God, He limits Satan's sifting power. Amen. Sift means to put flour through a sieve, a, a sieve, and other straining device in order to separate the fine from the coarse particles. To apply by scattering whip or as of a seed to examine or sort carefully. I'm here to tell you Satan wants to crush you. If Satan can have his way tonight, each and every one of us, including myself, he would love to crush us. And that's what I want to talk about just for a few moments. Satan wants to crush you. Heavenly Father, Help us tonight, dear Lord, to divinely, to rightly divide your word. Help us tonight, dear Lord, to understand your word. Help us tonight to receive your word. And we have to receive your word if we're going to make it in these last days. The Lord, I love you and honor you. I give you all praise. I give you all glory. And I thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. And we give you all praise and give glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. amen. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Amen. Satan's desire is to destroy those that love Jesus. Yep. If you're here tonight and you love the Lord, I'm here to tell you Satan out to destroy you. He don't want you to love the Lord. Amen. He don't want you to serve God. He doesn't even want you to be church. Right. He wants you to stay home. Right. He wants you to do whatever you want to do. Well, go do whatever you want to do. You and I will pay the price when we stand before God. Yes. Amen. The devil, Satan, desires to destroy you. He is ever standing before the Father in heaven, putting his finger of accusation against the child of God. 
trying to prove that he has legal right to yours and my immortal soul. The devil knows how to sift you. He knows what strings to pull. Come on. To get your anger to rise. Hello. He knows what financial pressure will do you, will do for your blood pressure. He knows how to trigger your impatience. He knows how to get under your skin. And he, he can get you all frustrated. Amen? Amen? He has desired to have you. I'm here to tell you, the devil wants you. And the devil's going to get a hold of you if you and I don't stay strong in the Lord. Amen? Amen? Revelation 12 and 10, as Sister Angela has brought it out, says the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Jesus' warning to Peter is the same to you and me today. Satan, Satan is trying to sift you, to destroy all that you are, and to, do, to try to break your spirit, your heart, your family, and your faith in God. Every time there is a problem, with your kids, come on, and you can't pay a bill even though you worked hard and you get angry for any reason and you have a, a temptation to do wrong or your faith is put to the test, it's just old slew foot trying to shift you. Amen. You just look at that Satan and say, pick up your weapons and flee. I have the authority to step all over thee. But no, we'll let the devil tear us up. Come on. He'll, he'll, he'll try his best to sift us. The sifting process, church, never stops. It is very uncomfortable. It's never pleasant to realize that there is still some impatient within us. To see that there are lumps of anger. And you thought that was your belly. That's a big lump of anger that still exists in all of us. Or that we have a lumpy, weak faith in God. We, we know people that today. Their faith. They say they got faith. <laughs> I remember... And I was going to bring one. I thought we had one up on the shelf and I looked at it today and I, then I had a senior moment. But you can remember and I can remember we, when we used an old hand operator, uh, uh, operated flower sifter. It was a simple little contraption that consisted of a little tin can with a screen in the bottom and a crank. And when you that turned the wire against the screen, flour wasn't as fine. Come on. As in those days as it is now. It always needed sifting to get out the lumps. Come on. We got some lumps in us today. The fine particles that made it through were used in the baking process. But there was always some rock hard pieces yeah. left over that were useless and they were usually cast away. Our lives are placed through a sifter. With each new day, the crank is turned and a few more of our rough edges disappear as the finer parts of the new man and the coarse parts of our sinful, fleshly nature are revealed so that these character flow, flaw, flaws can be discarded. This is why, thank God, we have an advocate with the Father. First John 2 and 1 says, My little children, these things write, things write unto you 
that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. Amen. The devil is trying to sift you. In other words, he's trying to destroy you. But thank God, amen, thank God that God is shifting us. That He's changing us. Taking out those things of corruption in our lives. <coughs> and get rid of them. But the devil is here trying to destroy you and I. But I thank God that Jesus said, He looked at Peter and He said, But I have prayed for thee. Amen. That thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strip it, thy brethren. Now, Jesus is saying that faith, that Peter's faith will fail. Come on. He will fail. He didn't say that, the, that Peter wouldn't make a mistake. He said, when thy, I pray that that faith fail not and when thou art converted. Jesus is not just any defense lawyer who stands in my defense. He holds the title to you. To my soul yes. and to my life. Yes. I belong to Him. And Satan can't touch me yep. without the permission right. of the owner. Right. I'm so glad that Jesus is on my side in the battle of my soul. Though Satan tries to sift us, and he will, and to destroy us, he can never accomplish the mission with because of Jesus Christ. The same command, listen to me, the same command that Jesus gave to Peter is for us also. Jesus is saying to Peter, when you make it to the scepter and Satan has done his work, you're going to come out on top. Yes, hey, hallelujah! Your faith will be tested. Your faith will be tried. Even power weak, but you are going to make it victoriously. Yes, amen, Lord. Amen. Not because of your own power. Right. Not because of your own ability. But because I'm, Jesus is making intercession yes. for you. Amen. And Satan cannot go further than Satan will, than God will allow him to go. Amen. Jesus told Peter, He said, now go. He said, stripping your fellow disciples because many of them aren't as strong as you are. Come on, this is what he's saying. Their faith will be weak also. They are going to run in fear, denying their knowledge of me, and they are going to emerge from the events of my death on the cross with disillusions, hearts, and doubts over the reality of my power and doubts over their own action. Jesus is telling Peter, things are going to happen. People are going to, they're going to lose their faith because I'm going to the cross. I'm going to pay a price for you. Church, I'm glad that He went to the cross. And my faith gets stronger and stronger every day because of what He did. We must remember we can't over, overcome Satan on our own. You cannot overcome Satan on your own. But by the power of the Holy Ghost and through the blood of the Lamb, you and I can and will overcome. Our victory over the sifting process will, will become a great part of our testimony. We will be much stronger for having faced the process. Amen! Amen! then we will be able to help our fellow men as they face that same sifting process to build their faith and to let them know that they will make it too because of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you go through something, it's there for a reason, church. And it's to help your fellow brother or sister. Because you have went through that process. You have went through that sifting process. You have went through that whatever it is. And you came out of it victoriously. Amen. Now you've got a testimony. Amen. Amen. 
There's many times I've heard people give their testimony to other people what they're going through because they've already went through it. Yes, amen. And if only they can make it, church, you can make it. Yes. Amen. But the devil is out to crush you and I. He's out to crush this church. But we're not going to allow him because he has given us the authority yes. to walk over him. And he said unto him in verses 33 and 34, and he said unto him, this is Peter, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou hast thrice denied that thou knowest me. Peter was already being sifted while Jesus was cautioning and encouraging him. Come on. You're tonight, you're sitting there, you may not think of you're doing it, but the Lord, through this message, is sifting you. He's trying to bring out things in your life and my life. That's not good. Come on, church. Satan has already begun to work on Peter's heart, mind, and his attitude. Peter's pride, it, it, pride in his own spirituality and his physical strength was his downfall. That's the, that's the problem with the church today. Is that their downfall is their pride. There's a lot of people in the church today are prideful. Come on. That's their downfall. And, that, and, they, and even in their physical strength, they think they can do it. They don't need God's help. Well, try it without Him. You'll fail. But I need Him every day. Satan has already caused pride. And his stubborn, self-reliant attitude arose within him. We don't have none of that here tonight. We don't have no stubbornness. Better have it on all recall now. Church, please realize that you have no power to fight Satan within yourself. It's still by the Spirit of the Lord that you will overcome and win any battle or come through the sifting process in victory. All of us are being sifted right now. And each of us has our own weak points that Satan knows about. Come on. You don't have to tell me about them. Satan already knows your weak points. He's trying to break you right now. Even while you listen to this message from God's own Word, don't let Him win. Keep your faith and keep it in Jesus and Him crucified. Ephesians 6.11 says, Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the vials of the devil. We should never attempt to fight the spiritual warfare or face sipping process without having the Word of God in our heart. We often forget that we are fighting a spiritual warfare. When your troubles and sicknesses come, they are often linked in some fashion to this war we are fighting. You are going through the scepter. Come on. God wants you to be like gold tried in a fire. You are a child of God. Amen? Amen. And He will not allow you to fail or fall, but will make a way to escape from every trial and temptation. When the sifting process is pressing down hard and grading away at your character, character, which is painful, and it seems that you just can't stand it any longer, just look up to Jesus and remember His promise to you. What was His promise to you and I? Romans 8, 28. Great promise. And we know that all things Work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to His purpose. 
In other words, when I'm going through something, come on, God's working it out for the good. I say God's working it out for the good. You shall win. Come on. You can't lose. Because heaven is waiting, your mansion is built, and God has established your way and designed eternal life for you. One day soon, the sifting process will end. Satan is sifting us now, but he will be utterly crushed and cast into hell forever. The battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. And he has never and will never lose a battle. Amen. 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 The devil don't like you. I said the devil don't like you. The devil wants to crush you. The devil wants to destroy this church. The devil wants to destroy this world. Look at it now. The world's in a mess. We need Jesus. Amen? We need Jesus. But the devil can't win. Come on, always remember, if you're a child of God, God only allows Satan so much room in your life. He can only go so far. That's it. Amen? Come on. You're going to be tried. Come on. You're going to have problems. There's going to be sifting in your life. And sometimes it hurts. Because God wants to get wants us to give up things that we like to do. Or you can sit there and say, well, I'm not going to give it up. But don't give it up then. I'm just going to be honest with you. You don't serve God, don't say and not say, you're going to hit, split, hell, wide open. Period. Come on. There's not going to be nobody who's going to skate into heaven. You're not going to make it by anybody's shirt tail or dress tail. You've got to walk this walk yourself. Or you're not going to make it. It's going to be a sad day. It's going to be a sad day. There's going to be a lot of people wake up and they're going to go looking for somebody in the home. The Lord came during the night as a thief in the night and that person's gone. Amen. They're going to look all around, go outside try to find that person. That mom, that husband, that, uh, that wife or child or whatever. I'm telling the truth. They're going to go outside. They're going to go in the bedroom looking for that grandma. And that grandma's not there. <coughs> You're going to be left behind. I'm telling the truth. That's going to be a sad day. Because there's going to be a lot of people left behind. Because they didn't want to serve God. They allow the devil to crush them. Amen? Amen? Don't let him do that. Don't let him crush you. Amen? You've got the authority. God has given you the authority. Speak to Satan. Tell him to pick up his weapons and flee. And walk all over him. Come on. We can speak to that mountain and it shall be removed. Yes, amen. Don't let the devil crush you. Don't let him try to destroy you. But let the Lord take care of everything in your life. If you allow him to do it. But it's up to you and it's up to me. What I do with this right here is up to me. It's not up to you. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But I'm going to read this word, to believe this word, to love this word because this word is so good and so true. Satan is out to crush you tonight. Well, we pray that you truly enjoyed that worship service and the wonderful preaching that we bring to you, Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the message of the cross. But I'd like to ask you a question, if there's any doubt at all in yourself whether you would die today that you could, would meet Jesus 
in heaven. I would like to say this little sinner prayer with you and have you repeat it with me today if you would. It's just words, but if you will say it and mean it from your heart, you will have no doubt after you say this. So just say this with me this today, if you would, please. Repeat it after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today asking you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe Jesus suffered and died and rose again for all. I am accepting Jesus Christ into my heart to cleanse me and make me whole. And now, by faith, I believe I am saved. Amen. If you said that little simple little prayer, Hey, angels in heaven today are rejoicing. But we would like to let you know that if you have any prayer requests at all, that you can go onto our website, victoryofthecross.org, and go to the place where it says prayer request. Or if you have anything at all you'd like for us to, to pray about or you want to share with us, go on there and we will definitely find it and read it and we'll pray about it with you. So, again, I pray that you enjoyed this, and we hope to see you again the next time we come back to you. God bless you, and thank you very much.